more but than it's, measured. But it's not always thoughts, right? It's always thoughts. No. Yeah. It's like a feeling sometimes. Like yeah, yeah. Because watch, thought. like you have a thought about that. You have a thought about me just happening. It was an occurrence. That was a, a reality that I just made. And you have a thought about that, like that was ridiculous. He's stupid for doing that. That's a thought. Like you have a thought, you have an opinion about that, whatever happens in reality. It's a reaction. Does that make sense? Well, I think it could and be both. The, the reaction, let's not talk about speculation. I want you to phrase questions so that I can be more specific and clear. Because mm -hmm. you're coming here, what? Because, because you want to know about karma, right? So. Well, and I want to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. <laughs> so does that make sense that it's every, everything that happens in reality, your your feeling about it is because you have a thought about it, you have a opinion, and the opinion comes from a linear mindset that you are not it, it's not happening because of you, it's not happening for you, it's not happening by you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, what you mean is like, it might be like a subconscious thing, subconscious yeah. programming, so you might not like, have a thought go right across your screen that you're aware of, yes. but it's like your brain is still, you know, has that connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But the whole subconscious discussion is, uh, again, like a little bit fragmenting a little bit of like your awareness. Does that make sense? Because like you're now categorizing it, breaking it. Into, it's helpful, don't get me wrong. Like I was breaking it down like that. But then again, like you're, you kind, of, you kind of now get into this uh, identity that you are the conscious and not the subconscious and not the unconscious. And that's when you become, or the superconscious, and that's when you become uh, disempowered and you become like, oh, I can't control what goes on here. You know, you, you start to think thoughts that are not in line because you are all of it. argue with anybody here. I just, I have my own opinion. And I think that uh, the way I explain it is perfectly fine. <laughs> but if you guys have questions about it, any more about that? About that previous thing that I just did? Specifically. You had a question about, did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's hard for me to like, if you're not specific with questions, for me to like answer it. So that's why I've asked you to be specific with your questions. Because you're telling a story otherwise. <laughs> and then you're asking for my reaction to it if you're not specific. So hopefully with that got across there and hopefully I did answer your question. So this here represents like your perfect pristine state of being that's always in bliss. Okay? This is bliss, this is a state of bliss. And uh, when we feel, let's say, anger about something, it's off track, okay? And as we, as I described um, as thoughts being linear earlier, hopefully you guys all made for, made for that. Um, linear time goes in this direction of, of like you moving through space, because you identify as a body moving and going from place to place and it's not connected unless you maybe connect with another parallel timeline which is like here and then that parallel timeline is also connected with like the person who is having the thoughts like let's say your friend right i'll put f down here your friend is having this timeline they want to also connect with you so you uh, take this route, and then you come closer with their timeline. You don't actually touch with their timeline. You just are very close to their parallel timeline. So you're kind of going along and like moving through spatial awareness, through space time, with them in the same direction, but you're not touching. You know, you're not intersecting. You're having your own thoughts. They're having their own thoughts. People right next to you can have, be suffering and misery, and like at the same moment you can be in bliss and inevitable like gratitude, right? So 
within this, uh, I'll slow down a little bit. So before I get into that, any questions about that real quick? Because I feel like Devin? Okay. I mean, like, I understand that like you're not actually like touching because like everyone has like their own thoughts and they're in their own reality. But don't you think it would make like more sense to be like sometimes you are kind of almost having like a shared reality with someone when you are like so close to them? It's like maybe it's not technical, technical, right, right. but it's still like you know. I think it is pretty hard for someone to be around like you know a bunch of people that are like having despair and then be like, well, I'm in charge of my own thoughts, so it's possible for me to be like still maintaining this level of bliss even though everything around you is like horrible. Like you're gonna be like feeling that energy even if it's like you do have your control. Like you know, and some people are just you know and. They're feeling things more from of other people. Okay, that's you again making yourself separate and not acceptance that like you are not a part of it all. Like does you say I am more or they are less? And again, uh, I did explain this earlier how uh, thoughts are thoughts are karma and karma is time. Karma is thoughts repeat, right? I have, yeah. to, I have to explain this again, but thoughts and time repeat, right? Like they say, history repeats itself. Yeah. And they come in certain uh, sequences or kind of uh, situations, circumstances, scenarios, right? So when you have this similar scenario that's happened again, you're literally repeating the same thought or the same emotion because they're tied together. You're repeating it again and again and again, and you're getting the same outcome. And this is what is happening when you believe that you're tied to somebody in some way. This is what is happening when you believe that you're sharing a reality with somebody is because you think that because they you're basing your thinking on the previous the previous reality that's the previous thoughts that have again occurred over and over again. Does that make sense? Okay. I explained it earlier. No, no, I do I, I Well, can you be more specific about your question so I can clear, clarify? <laughs> because you just did tell me a story. Does that make sense? I, I know it is a story because for me it's like the way I think it's more of like in terms of like descriptions, not like of like, you know, scientific facts. I don't want to get you like all heated, but I mean, like I, I, the way I view things is I connect more on like an emotional level. Right, me that's too. That's how I am. Me too, me too. And, and that's, I base my uh, state of being on the thoughts I'm having, right? Okay. The thoughts I'm having is a direct reflection of like my state of being. Does yeah. that make sense? So they're, they're reciprocated. So they're both equalized. They're not more or less than the other, but they're, they're in communion with each other. Since I believe that like every single person is like different, but I also like believe it on like a different, different level. It's like, I think we're all like thinking things differently. Like, I think we're all, we have different ways of, like, how we process things. Yes. And the difference is that we're all are in our own reality. So, I feel like this is why every single person, like, you know, in the metaphysical spiritual community needs to, like, learn astrology because that's the only, like, okay. factual well, that's tool we have yeah, yeah, that's great. to be able to, like, understand how other people are viewing things. Totally. But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying mm -hmm. at all. I agree with everything you know, I like, think that you're like completely brilliant and you. you have so many good things to say and I know you're like really smart. It's just I think <laughs> right, I do. I think Cheney's awesome. Like Cheney's Thanks, the best. Man. It's just for me I think that it's like we all have our own reality but we're like in when we're interacting with people, we're like joining realities and then we like kind of like just separate and we go back to our own realities and then we come together and we're like in a reality. So I just think yeah. in and out. But you know I have my birth note as a too, like you, so I think of things on a different philosophical level because my whole thing is about relationships and communication. Right, right. Well, yeah. I did explain how, like, we're traveling and because we think ourselves as a body, right? Like, you're Emily and I'm Shane, right? Yeah. We're, we're in this room together, so we must have, like, similar thoughts, right? Not the case. Because we're, we're actually in this room, in this parallel reality. We're all parallel realities, right? 
and it looks like we're having the same experience. Not the case. Okay? Because you could be suffering, I could be suffering, and you'd be completely opposite from that. Okay? So this idea, this impression, this bias, this opinion that you are fe someone else is feeling what you're feeling, completely not factual. Oh, I don't see that. I know, but this is this is you're basing what you're feeling off of like the circumstances. I'm just saying sometimes people are maybe not having like much of their own personal identity, such as like myself, and I'm more of like I'm always going off of like other people around me. And I exactly. do think there is some sort of scientific thing that like backs this up as well. Yeah, but I'm explaining that perfectly pregnant. well right now. Like you're basing your how you perceive it being, you're basing that on the situations that that is already passed. Like you had an emotional reaction to that. You didn't maybe you were noticed it, maybe you didn't. Well, yeah, because it reminds me of before. Exactly. Do you remember? So it put, yeah, exactly. So it puts you in a state of being that's also happened before and therefore you're it caught in this repetitious karmic cycle that's happening over and over and over again. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So within this uh, idea that you are repeating, within this idea that you think that uh, you are something that is other than, something that is like, a part of the circumstances, you're thinking that in its own way you're making yourself a uh, victim to the circumstance. Make sense? Thinking that you are part of this. Does that make sense? Okay. I mean, like. I'm explaining. I mean, no, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. I'm probably moving on. Okay, I'll move on. Please. We have, like, guys, let me give you a heads up. Yeah, yeah. You have, like, 12 minutes. Okay. Which, so. Cool. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about this. This is the ineffable state of bliss that we that we can and have in each moment. But when we have anger, let's say it's out here, or even uh, sadness a little bit farther out, keep in mind that the the state of bliss that you that's possible is in alignment with like complete freedom, complete ecstasy, complete bliss that you are uh, capable of anything, right? That you're basically God, like you're Buddha, right? That's the Buddha mind or the so that's possible, right? And the farther away you get from that, the less uh, you feel like you are in control. Or I shouldn't say control, but the less you can accept what is going on in your physical circumstances, okay? So the more farther out you say like anger, you're frustrated with your, it's not going the way you're, you want it to go. You're sad because uh, you've, been through this again and again and again and it's repeating and like you feel like you have no control over it. Let's and then you feel you feel even farther away from bliss, you feel like you feel like you're gonna die, right? Because of the emotional state you're in. You feel like you you are completely have no you are subjected to the circumstances and you are completely separate from this reality that you are in because the reality that you are afraid of is not actually the reality that you're that you're a part of. Like the reality that you are afraid of is a reality based on a thought which is not real. Make sense? Thoughts are not real. This marker is real. My body can be said is real, but thoughts that are happening right now simultaneously to this parallel reality that's going on right now, it's not, it's, I shouldn't say it's not real, it's valid, right? It's, it's a possibility, it's a probable timeline, it's a probability, but it's not yet. So you have control. There's not, I shouldn't say control. You have an option, there's a choice there, there's freedom. So let's say we, okay, let's go a little bit here. Uh, What's better than anger? Let's say like acceptance, right? Acceptance of this moment, which is like very hard. It's very like green, right? If you guys study the chakra, it's like red, yellow, orange, green, 
blue, which is like, uh, you're trying to manipulate the situation now, which I'm not pointing any fingers. <laughs> but this is blue, um, and then uh, and then there's like indigo, which is like you're completely cloistering and sequestering yourself in this in this parallel moment, and you're like uh, you 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 uh, you feel like you still have like a choice, but you have to withdraw yourself completely. Does that make sense? So indigo, and then you know the state of bliss where it's like I'm God and I accept this moment, even though it's not the thing that ultimately I can imagine, right? Because what you can imagine is not is not uh, limited by the physics, limited by what's going on in your scenario, your circumstances, your uh, results. Your imagination is occurring on a much higher vibration and is not at all regulated or limited to the physical uh, reality that you inhabit right now. So, so we we so when we uh, think that we're a body and we're moving from one point A to point B and we're moving through space and time, um, we think that uh, it's linear. You know, we think that I have to be there by two. I'm it's twelve right now. I have an hour and forty five minutes to go. So um, within that, you know, you're basically uh, thinking ordinarily. <laughs> your ordinary thinking during that thing, and that is basically sloppy. Ordinary thinking is sloppy, okay? In ordinary thinking, you can you can uh, have bliss, oh, you're so excited, you're listening to your favorite song in the car, blah, 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 and then you go into sadness because that certain song hit that chord and it reminded you of that very painful breakup. And then you, you, go the other direction and now you're like afraid for your life because that sadness way out here in red that sadness hit that struck that chord and now you feel like you have no option you have nobody to love you have nobody that can ever appreciate you the way that they did you know this whole fucking drama is bullshit okay it's not you i teach and my teachings are that thoughts are entities i'm not going to get into that today but uh, I will say that ordinary thinking is sloppy as fuck, okay? So how do we get out of ordinary thinking? We do things that get in, a, in us in a state of acceptance. We, we, get, we do things that get us in a higher and higher vibration. I can tell you all these things that make me that way, but it's not gonna be any, of any benefit because you need to do what makes you feel best not be at all conditional or judgmental about what it is because like you can get a, a gallon of ice cream and feel like excited as fuck to eat that ice cream and like it'll get you in a better state of mind temporarily but then as i explained earlier the choices of the five right we each have five choices in each event so that'll get you in a state oh after ice cream i could go uh watch my favorite movie and that'll get you in a better state and you can go keep it going up and up and up and up but within this, you need to be aware that you have choices that you can follow your excitement, you can follow your imagination, you can follow the things that inspire you. So, uh, any questions about that? Are you saying that there is like uh, a correlation between the emotion and the vibration? Is there like an actual way to test that and to have it like like a number? There's infinite ways. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can do it. You can, you can measure it. Yeah, yeah, totally. You can measure it uh, with the way that you treat people. You can measure it with the way that you are creating art. Is that, there's infinite ways you can do this thing. You know, it's up to you. Because I just get, like, um, just, I'm just skeptical of, like, everyone says that anger is, like, the lowest. No. But, I mean, but, well, it's, you know, everyone, but you I, know what I mean? It's, like, um, is it so? Is it? I'm, I'm just confused of how it like correlates. Like if, like you're saying, like there's a color and this and that, but um, there's. Throw it out the window. You with it. If it doesn't make intuitive sense, just leave it. <laughs> but you know what you're saying? Like there's like the vibration. Each is so there is like the emotions can correlate to the vibration, or is it different for like each person, or how does that like, exactly work? Exactly, emotions do correlate to a thought because like a thought 
I could get into this right now. Yeah, I might tell. Okay. <laughs> a thought has a certain, you could say, percentage, which is a measurable way of saying of like uh, service to self, STO, and service, service, ah, service to self, service to others, service to self. A thought has a given percentage of that. Let's just say that, okay? Just for instance, this is not science, guys. So let's say a thought has a 50%, no, let's say even more dramatic than that. Let's say it's 30% service to others, 30%, this, this particular thought, right? And it's like a thought of like, uh, you leaving the party to go home and like watch your, or play video games or something, right? So it's like 30% service to others, because the par they want you at the party, right? They invite you, so, so, uh, so 70% is service to others, service to self, and you can measure it that way. But ultimately, uh, that's, the, I don't know, that's one way. There's infinite ways I, talk, I, I say this. But you know how they say like, um, so when you're at a certain vibration, that's when you start having like diseases and sicknesses and that? Yeah. So, is there like a way to be like we are able to actually like track like this this feeling of bliss is like this level of vibration, and then this feeling of like anger is like this right. or like despair or like etc. Et yeah, it's completely done within your own reality. That's how. Okay. <laughs> you have to navigate for yourself. Like, you, there's not any instrument that you can possibly measure this with because. It, the the, thi the things that you do, this is the way you measure it outside, right? Okay. The things that, that you're doing, the events and the people that you're with. Not so much the people, because you will have judgment. The, it's the, the way the people make you feel. That's how you judge your state of being. That's how you judge your emotional state. It's like the way the people make you feel. Not the people themselves, because you have your own opinion. You're, the, way you make you, the way that you're feeling is the reaction to the people, your reaction. So it's completely unique and it can change and shift and rearrange itself in uh, any way they want. So the way, to answer your question more, very specifically again, the way to measure your state of being, your emotional state, is to feel what each event is making you feel like it, right? You're, you feel a certain way when you're here in this room, right? You feel maybe frustrated that you're like, Cheney's not explaining this very good, or like, you can feel, you can do anything, but this is in itself a way to uh, justify, or to like, measure. Measure your thinking, measure what state you're at. Because emotion, emotions and uh, thoughts are completely they're un. They're, you can't. You can't get them apart. <laughs> they're like one, right? Yeah. Um. There's one other thing. What is it? What time we got? Okay. Yeah. Like two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is about the ice cream. Okay. Sure. So I have this like whole belief that it's like. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> when you are feeling something is good, but you are also like knowing it is good, so it's like both. Because you can like you know you know the difference between like a thought and a feeling, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like you feel the ice cream's good, like it's making you feel good, but you know it's not good. So that's, isn't How do you that know it's not good? Because anything processed sugar is bad for your soul and your okay. spirit, and it's not. How, it's is it bad, How is it bad for your soul and spirit when it has no limitation to physical reality? It does have some sort of thing internally because every single thing in our body is like a uh, like DNA code, this and that. And oh, so yeah. it's like the, You're getting at all this. Well, I'm just part, saying, jargon, right? I'm just saying that technically, I think the ice cream. While it does like lower your emotional sense of like you know happiness and joy, it's like of like soul level is lowering your vibration technically, and this is what I have been personally struggling with because I have like I feel like I have addiction to like processed sugar. Like, I, I, it makes me like so happy, but then I feel like long term it's actually could be doing things internally that like I on like a subconscious. But you see all these beliefs realize. about it, all the beliefs about the reality that the sugar makes you feel good are making you feel worse. Same as drugs. It's the same. The beliefs and the thoughts about it, which is yeah. the craving, is making it worse than yeah. it actually is. If you actually just do the fucking craving, enjoy it. 
completely without thinking about it, like be present while you're doing it, then you won't have any other judgments about it. And how do you get out of that state of judging, uh, judging like what you've done or what you're doing or what you want to do? How do you get out of that state? Accepting and also just doing it without any other discret, any other like contemplating about it. Yeah, because it's like if every single thought we have is like going somewhere, it's like if we're obsessing about something. Yeah, yeah it's like, see, you're kind of like mixing the frequency here. Like you really are a little bit. Okay, and the, the beliefs, you know, I have my own beliefs, but I'm, a, I'm the one doing the talking right now. So actually, I'm done with talking. So. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, right? Good. Yeah. And I can touch on it a little too. Yeah. Yeah. Give me your will. Awesome. And we can yeah. always like Much better have a little question kind of at the end too. If like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. If there's so 